Hi and welcome to Mr. Ford's Guide to the a Certification Exam. In this video, we take a look at input devices. Hi and welcome back. In this video, I want to take a look at some common input devices. Keep in mind, as I've said in other videos, we're going to take a look at all this information in more detail in other chapters. This is just an overview. So we begin by looking at the relationship, first of all, between input and output. Input, output, getting information in, pulling information out. We can also refer to this as I.O. Some examples of input devices would be, for example, keyboard, mouse, touchpad, scanners, output, video, audio, and printers. So take a quick look right now at whatever device you're using to watch these videos. You might be on a computer, you might be on a tablet, you might be on your smartphone, you might be on a game console. We can see YouTube videos on the Xbox. You can see how you would get information into the computer, how you get the computer to do what you want it to do. Now keep in mind, and here's the big part, that no matter what you're using to get information into a computer, at the end of the day, the computer needs to be able to convert that information into digital input. It needs to convert that into those zeros and ones that we've talked about. Now, if you are um, interested, we are going to go more into zeros and ones, binary and conversion in probably chapter three. But I don't want to really do that in chapter two because this is just an overview. Let's take a look at some common input devices. We have the keyboard. The keyboard still maintains the title king of input devices. So this is still the king of input devices, your keyboard. Now, whether this remains so as the years go by, who knows? Uh, maybe one day it will be like the Matrix where you just plug in and no keyboard required. But right now, keyboards are still the most common type of input devices. I've seen that question show up on the A-plus exam in the previous year. So just file that away in case it pops up. The mouse, the mouse is a, another type of input device. The touch screen, which is becoming much, much more popular, even the tablet, the phones, all that good stuff. A graphics pad. This is something that you're gonna run into, especially if you work in a, a digital media creation group or team where people can actually draw on a pad, and it's a digital pad. Think about it when you go and sign your name at like Walmart or Costco or HEB or any other store where you sign your name. It's kind of like that, except a graphics pad is much more advanced than that. But the, the principles are there where you can draw and do all that cool stuff. And I've seen some people do some amazing things with graphic pads. I can still do a stick figure. <laughs> the trackball, the trackball is kind of like a mouse. With a mouse, you're moving the mouse around to get it to go where you want. In a trackball, the mouse remains in one place and your thumb manipulates this ball to move the cursor around the screen. Joysticks, I think we all are familiar with what joysticks are, the, 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 the old, you know, you play Pac-Man on. Barcode reader, if you go again to any grocery store, any store, it goes beep, 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 beep. You can read things that way. In another video series, I actually talked about the barcode reader you can get for your smartphone where you can scan products and check prices through Amazon. Uh, light pens and, of course, assistive technology. Assistive technology is used for uh, used by people with special needs. So, for example, if you're uh, familiar with um, Stephen Hawkins. Stephen Hawkins is probably, probably one of the most well-known persons out there who uses assistive technology. Now, being an educator, special ed departments, depending on the levels of special ed that they cover, might have assistive technologies available for their students. So taking a look real quick at the keyboard. Again, the keyboard is the most common input device. It predates the mouse. When computers were first on the scene, there was no keyboard, by the way. It was, as I said before, little switches. But then the keyboard came around. There was no mouse. There was no need for mouse because, or mouse because at the time, the operating system and everything there was all text-based. So you couldn't click on stuff and move the mouse around. It was all text-based. Most keyboards are known as a QWERTY keyboard. Now, why would it be called a QWERTY keyboard? Take a look at your keyboard right now. Take a look at the arrangements of the letters. Q, W, E, R, T, Y. QWERTY keyboard. There are other versions of keyboards, but the QWERTY keyboard is definitely the most popular type of keyboard out there. 
and you can adjust the settings of your keyboard in different aspects. So you can go to like control panel or systems properties, things like that to play with the different settings. Now, interestingly enough, keyboards are probably one of the most nasty, dirty, icky things around. In fact, in some studies, the keyboard was shown to have more bacteria on it than a toilet seat. So clean that keyboard. How do you clean it? Well, you first of all, make sure everything's powered down and turned off. And then you take a damp cloth and you just kind of rub it down on the keyboard. And that should just kind of clean it out and you should be good from there. You can also use pre-made cleaners and they'll, so they'll be on a pre-moistened wipe that you can use. Now this keyboard really, I can't do it with it because it's kind of a, a closed keyboard. But the other keyboards, you might have the gaps in between the keys. You flip it on its side, you flip it upside down, you take the canned air and you clean it out that way. The next device is the mouse. I remember back in the day, the very first mouse I had, I had to install a serial card into my computer to get the mouse to work. And I had to turn off my sound card <laughs> so I could use the mouse. Um, anyhow, but yeah, the first mice that you had, you had to actually put a card in your computer to get it to actually play with the mouse. Now, obviously, you don't have to worry about that. They come either USB, wireless, Bluetooth, whatever. And you can really kind of go crazy on the mouse. The mouse you get with the computer is a generic mouse. Depending on what you do, you might want a, a better mouse. So I have a Logitech. I'm not getting paid for this, by the way. Um, a Logitech. I love this mouse. It's actually a gaming mouse where I can put in weights. Let me see if I can pull out. Yeah. So, for example, this is a, a weighted mouse. So it goes in here, clicky clicky, and now my mouse. And I've got scroll wheel, I've got different buttons. Now, I'm not a big gamer on the computer. Yeah, I play Warcraft, but I use my mouse and I have this heavy mouse because I do a lot of video editing, I do a lot of graphic editing, and so I like to have that extra weight there. It helps me control the mouse better than a, a little light plastic mouse. So that's just personal um, opinion. But next time you go to a computer store, Take a look around the gaming section and take a look at how crazy those mice can actually get. Some of those get pretty expensive. Now, if you might have noticed, the bottom of my mouse did not have the little ball. It has an optic. It's an optic mouse. But if you still have a little ball mouse, you need to clean those. You take the ball out. You clean it out. Now, optic mice, you just wipe the bottom with a, again, damp cloth. If your cursor starts to jump around unexpectedly, it could be a hair. A hair getting stuck in there will, will do it all the time. If you have animals, it will happen quite a bit. So a canned air, just again, damp cloth, you're good to go. And the other input device I want to talk about would be a scanner. The scanner takes hard copy and turns it into soft copy. What I mean by that, hard copy is a physical, touchable thing. It's paper that you can touch. It's something that you can read. That's hard copy. Soft copy is when you scan it and turn it into digital information, zeros and ones. Things to consider when buying a scanner, budget, pff, number one, budget. How much do you want to spend on this thing? You can go crazy and you can keep it you know, cheap. What do you need it for? A lot of the less expensive scanners can do a lot of really cool stuff. So what do you need it for? Resolution, dots per inch, how clear will it be? Fit depth, basically how well it represents color and grayscale. Okay, in our next video, we're going to take a look at output devices.